Alright guys, welcome back to SmartHelping.com here. I'm doing an update on the real estate model. Basically, the last couple models I did, I added a discounted cash flow, and then from there, and that was a couple months ago, I've done an update for the IRR calculation right here for the whole project. And this also would affect the IRR in the um, sponsor versus investor. And basically, here's the change. Real simple, I added a year zero, which I don't know what I was thinking. I was trying to combine year zero, cal year zero cash outflows with the potential to make net income in that same year. For internal rate of return, that doesn't make any sense. You have to have a zero, year zero where cash goes out, and then the next period has to be you know your first year's operating period or whatever whenever you start collecting rent revenues you start new here so that has now been adjusted as you can see here the cash flow now goes out one time for each investor and sponsor and these black rows are the old these black rows matter and these down here matter for the cash flows based on different hurdle levels. All this up here is to see, but it's not, you know, cash flow after tax. Who knows what that number could be because everyone has a different tax situation. But um, we then come down here, and this shows you cash flow. This is basically adding the whatever tax was taken out back in right here. And then here is the same thing in but including the uh, building uh, potential sale and then this you can see this splits that line up between investor and sponsor row 47 so row 47 is really our project IRR this is the whole project what it's doing here's a split between investor and sponsor based on all the inputs and then here's the split up of investor and sponsor cash flows based on um, different hurdle levels so they'll always be putting in whatever the investor invests and the sponsor invests that will be the same no matter what but then the cash flows for each will change you know depending on the hurdle level you can see what they would be um, and then the whole project IRR is calculated here and then you've got your hurdles which you can all you can input these manually um, how much you want the sponsor to be promoted you know basically how much more share they get based on if they complete you know this internal rate of return hurdle or 7% or 12 and it highlights based on that changing so here the just the scenario just to paint you a quick picture this is saying you know you're buying a building for 4.5 million you've got 740,000 with startup costs opening costs reserve etc then you've got 750,000 that these sponsors putting out you're gonna finance 50% that's 2.6 million that you're not gonna have to raise in equity so the rest to cover the rest of the project it's you see is five million two forty you've currently got your seven fifty plus the two point six in financing that's three point three then you have equity you need from investors at one point eight so a total of five two forty you see that matches that five two forty we've also got investor units here uh sponsorship closing costs on the this is closing costs for the loan um no. There's two different closing costs. We have a closing cost here of 2%, and that is 2% of the purchase price of the building. But then we also have a closing cost here of 1%, and that is going to be on when you sell. So, whatever that closing cost might be, it could be anything, uh, depending on your situation. So you're putting out that capital. This is how much the sponsor's putting out. This is how much the investor's really putting out in cash. And um, it's a four-year investment. You can see it's going to January 2020. We've got cash flows. Here's how the revenue's increasing from year 1 to 10, 11 to 20, 21 to 30. And same with expense growth. We're seeing a terminal cap rate of 6%. That's taking the uh, net operating income uh, number divided by 6% and that gets you a, a value that you're going to sell the building for 
So obviously that's a gain in this case because you can see the project's profitable. Uh, you know, cash on cash returns 100%. And then after you implement the hurdles, this is probably one of the most important things of the model is you can see how the hurdles affect cash flow on the whole project. So obviously the sponsor gets, you know, more favorable numbers if they get a certain IRR. And you guys, you know, these IRR hurdles can be set at whatever, you know, before the project starts and the promote as well. Um, but based on that, you'll see changes in the cash flow return to the sponsors and cash flow to the investors. Um, and then you can see here in the graph, the sponsor, you can see how, how much their cash flow increases with this current hurdle. Goes from, you know, 759000 which is this number, net cash return, to after at goes to $1.8 million which you can see right here. So you go from 759 to 1.8 and then the investor is going to lose a little bit because well they're going to give up that money because the sponsor has done such a well, you know, good job on that, uh, um, the project, 20% internal return. So they're going to instead get getting 1.8 million, they're going to take 764,000. Now let's see how this changes. Well, let's say they don't sell till 2029, so nine years further in the past. And then let's say our hurdles go, let's say this hurdle is 20%. So now you've only got hurdle two. You can see the investor is giving up less. They're still giving up some, but their net cash flow goes from 6.4 to 4.8. Investor, the sponsor goes from 2.6 returned all the way up to a net of 4.2. And that's how you can see it within the chart. And I'll probably put a little marker in here. Okay, so that's it. Just want to show you that update real quickly. It makes this model a lot easier to use. Um, and follow with the year zero cash flows and then the income starts. You can also delay the income if you want, say, a period where you're going to have some expenses but no income, but you're operating. You could put that right here in number of months. Right now I have five. Let's say if I put two, you see all this gets a little bit better because you're increasing cash flow. You're having cash flow for longer. So now you can see your or month one and two are blank and then it goes out. If I said, say, eight months setup period, you see this automatically updates for eight months. You put in all your expenses here that go out into time and then the annual will automatically update based on what's in your monthly and you've got all your cash flows. This kind of cash flow, the whatever hurdle you're at will light up in black and it says net present value for the project, for the investor and the sponsor. For each of the different hurdles or no hurdle. Discount right here Okay, that's about it. Uh, hopefully that makes this a little bit easier to use and now you have a little bit more idea of how uh, this works and how you can use it to try to explain to investors what the cash flows look like in different scenarios and also for yourself to project out um, different real estate ventures. Alright, have a great day.